Man-made reservoirs come in all shapes and sizes. The largest by volume in the world is Lake Kariba, along the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe. To give you some perspective on size, it has a surface area of 2,150 square miles. It's a big body of water. That is almost twice the size of the state of Rhode Island. Interestingly, in the U.S., of the top 10 largest reservoirs, three of them are in the Dakotas, where we are today. Lake Francis Case, over 100,000 acres. Lake Sakakawea, over 300,000 acres. And Lake Oahe, nearly 400,000 acres. Today we're on one of their little good. brothers, but it's still pretty good sized. Around 5,000 acres of fishable water. On today's edge, we join Jeremy Smith and Al Linder as they take us reservoir fishing. But when they're hitting that X rep, it's, it's about as good as it gets, man. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. There we go. That feels like a good fish. Ooh. Yes, sir. Feels real good. I'm not sure what it is. Nice big brownie owl. Big, big smallmouth. Yeah. Look at the size of that one. Quite the change of pace. You know, we spent yesterday primarily running and gunning, really fishing fast with hard baits, and we found a few areas that held. A number of fish and now we're fishing just a little bit slower got the the jigs out and some plastics and and um, a couple of reasons one we wanted to see the depth of the fish that were on those spots and then secondly it got significantly colder today big change of weather the the nor'easter came in weather dropped about 15 degrees we had rain all morning but you know what i love about smallmouth bass they don't care they bite rain Son, it doesn't matter. They've always got a great attitude. Got one? All right. We got ourselves a little hole here. You're Hell's right on. by the boat after hey, you got that nice one. one. Look at it. They're crazy. Oh, here, man. Just man. Fish after fish. It's another big one, man. That's a big fish. Jerry, yeah, this, was, this, this was a good find. I didn't know what these fish were going to do today after the weather we seen yesterday. You know, it took a little while. We did a lot of stuff yesterday. We're looking at a lot of different water and a lot of different presentations. But look at that one, huh? Oh, man. Man. Today we're zeroing in a little bit more on the brownies. We still haven't got those walleyes and those white bass clicked here. They ain't over yet. We're running uh, uh, way up in a river to see if we could find them. Look at that. Whew, those are nice fish. fish yeah. Ooh, they look like a mount. Ooh, Just bad this might be our new favorite lake, Jer. <laughs> yeah. Large reservoirs can be kind of intimidating. So much of the water looks the same, and it can be hard to even know where to start. The fact is, all rivers flow downhill, and knowing the direction of the flow can give you some clues on where to start your search for a particular species of fish in the early season. Walleyes and white bass are current driven species. When they have an option, they will have a natural tendency to want to swim into current for procreation. Smallmouth, largemouth, muskie, and pike are more resident type fish. Once they settle in and are established in an area in the reservoir, they live there. Their seasonal movements may be shallow to deep or vice versa, but for the most part, they do not make mass migrations. So knowing this and looking at a large reservoir where the flow is coming from the north, it's safe to assume that the upper part of the reservoir would likely have stronger walleye and white bass populations in the early season. The smallmouth populations could be anywhere as long as the structure and cover is right. We are using the run and gun approach for chasing smallies, sampling large points with rock, rip rep, and current pushes. These fish are not shy and will let you know if they're around. Once we start hitting the fish, we break down that stretch of water pretty extensively. Then we keep spot hopping down the reservoir. It's a really fun and aggressive way to chase these guys. You know, there's something about riprap 
This segment has been brought to you by Donlinger Automotive, and they want to encourage you to drive safe on the road and on the water. This segment is brought to you by Wavy Label Eyewear, backed by lifetime warranty. We see what others don't. You know, there's something about riprap that has fish on it all year long, no matter where you go in the country. It just really is, a, it, it is an amazing piece of habitat. Yeah, you know, you could come on stuff, and especially in these Dakota waters, in spring of the year, a lot of anglers fish off of this riprap, and they catch everything. I mean, one day it's loaded with white bass, one day it's loaded with smallmouth, one day it's walleyes. I, I mean, you never, ever, ever go by riprap without fishing it, ever. Ever. As I said, schools, schools of fish visit riprap on a regular basis. That's kind of true anywhere in the country. Riprap and reservoirs go hand in hand. It's also known as shot rock, rock armor, or rubble, and is man placed rock or other material used to protect stream beds, bridge embutments, pilings, and other shoreline structures against any type of erosion. This structure can be fish magnets at times, simply because a lot of the surrounding area will be devoid of cover. These are prime locations to attract and hold bait fish, and in the spring, if you find prey, you will often find the predators. One thing I will say, we like to move fast covering these areas. If you get a bite, work that zone for a while, but keep moving. This structure is so repetitious that the fish will often move along the length of it like a highway. You just gotta crash into them. That was so weird. Instant. Instant. Yeah. Jeez, it's just... Boom, 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 boom. These are just pigs, man. Just pigs. Here we go. I don't know how many of these things we've got today, but it is endless. Oh man, oh man. A lot of these spots we were fishing earlier even, we got the wind and the weather changed, and the fish either showed up or they got more aggressive. We're right in that transition. You know, and, and when you hit that, that water's around 50 degrees that we're dealing with now, that's a time when there can be fish. Oh, Al's got another one shallow there but you know there can still be fish out deep wintering so it's a big 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 time of transition so you gotta gotta mess around with some of those you know transitional depths in that like 8 to 12 can be really dynamite another one that wind is start, starting to remind me of the dakotas that uh, that 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 you love jerk <laughs> it's just getting right walleye chop pounding on the rocks every, every, everywhere <laughs> and it's only gonna get Windier. <laughs> that fish was down uh, down in about ten today. Yeah. Well, we weren't fishing here in plastics yesterday. We were fishing. That's true. Hard baits. That's true. Look at that big bite tube. Oh, Jared, this this spot. It wasn't like that ding pole we before. These are big gals here. Nice. These are big gals. Oh, this is a small one. I thought he was huh. bigger than that. If I can actually flip this one. The quicker I get him in, the quicker I can get it in the water and catch another one. <laughs> that one? Yeah. yeah. Got him. Got him. Oh, I missed got him. him. I got, got one? Yeah. Now, what do you got? I got I got another smallie right in the back of yours. Sweet. Yeah. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Now what do you got? I got I got another smallie right in the back of yours. Sweet. Yeah. 
Don't feel like Oh, and I got another you one got too. Another one? Oh, I man. think we found ourselves a honey hole. Oh, look at this. Woo! They're good ones too, man. Hello, brown Hello. bass. You got me beat. I'm loving life, Al. <laughs> this is sweet. Boy, how nice is it to be able to, I mean, think about back oh. in the day when we were running a four treks or whatever, but now we just push a button yeah, and we can I stay know. in this spot and just beat them up. That spot lock's amazing. All right, you got me beat. Oh yeah, this is a good, good fish here. Yeah, you, you're talking about technology today, this whole system. Well, look at you. Look at how much that thing ate it. Yeah, the whole system is yeah, and linked together forever, all the way back to the talons. Yeah, yeah, a, a little bit of a difference. You got a me. little bit of a difference. But we just, it was like forecasting. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Hooray. Ah, love it. Oh, we feel like good fishermen today. Uh, I'm letting mine go. Try for another. Ooh. That's so much fun. Uh, go, baby. Yeah, like Al was mentioning, everything is, is linked together. We've essentially got a one boat network. So my fish finders talk together so I can share waypoints on these. I've got a Solix system, so I just need one card. And then I've got the mapping on both units. I can deploy the talent from this. I can do the iPilot link features through my fish finders. I can also control it with my main remote or I've got this little micro remote here, you name it. You can pretty much dominate boat control with this type of system. It really is nice to have the Humminbird Minn Kota combo. You know, I've been with Humminbird pretty much my entire career. I go back to the soup. The Super 60 days, Jer. The Super 60. <laughs> Those of you who remember flashers, you have many, most of you never even had a flash, a flasher in open water. But I've been running birds all that time. And boy, we've come a long way, baby. Long way. We get a ton of questions about fishing line. What kind of line should I use for a number of applications? And really, there isn't a right or a wrong in, in many situations. However, there are cases where certain lines tend to perform better than other lines. So I'm gonna kind of run through the different lines that I've got on deck for fishing right now. You can see on this one, I've been throwing this little boot tail swim bait. On here, I've got 10 pound suffix 832 in high vis yellow. This is a great all around line. I use this line for jerk bait fishing. I do a lot of jigging with it. It's just a great utility line and that high vis yellow shows up really good when you're fishing slack line and you see those bites when the bait's falling. Another braid that I use, because not all braids are the same, is Suffix Nano Braid. Now on this rod, that's what I have spooled up here. You'll notice this is the spinning rod, this glass spinning rod that I'm throwing really light number five shad wraps with. This Nano Braid is like the ultimate line I've ever seen for casting light baits a long, long distance. So Nano Braid is my go-to when it comes to throwing really light baits, especially in wind. And lastly, you can't forget about mono. Now, mono is still a great line. This is Suffix Advance, it's 10 pound. This is the line that I'm using on my rattle, rattle bait stick. And I like it because this Advance doesn't have a ton of stretch, but it's still got a little stretch. And I like that whole kind of the soft rod, the stretchy line for fishing crankbaits and that really, uh, that light, uh, those light wire hooks with the, with the heavy bait. So out here, I'm fishing monofilament for throwing my, my rattle baits. I'm using Suffix Nano Braid for throwing the light balsa baits. I'm using 832 for doing a lot of my different applications. And then I've got fluorocarbon as my leader. Got a fish? Got him, yeah. What kind of fish you got? Brownie. Good nice brownie. one too, looks like, huh? Yeah. Good brownie. Whoa, whoa. Bulldog. She's a good one. Nice. Where are you, fish? I don't even see you. All I know is you're a good Ooh, one. Oh, Smalley. Or on, on a jerk bait. Yeah. Ooh. Bulldog. Bulldog jerk. Whoo. Cool. They're so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on. You got all them 
Oh, them hooks in you. <clears throat> oh, that fish. Hit that baby pretty darn good. You know, it's very, you know, when we're fishing like this, we got a number of rods rigged with a lot of different baits. And almost pretty much never, if Jer's throwing one type of bait on a structure, I'll pick up one of the other rods behind him. If he's swimming a, a, a boot tail, I'll grab a jerk bait. If he's throwing a, a rip and wrap, I'll throw a boot tail. We just kind of mix it up and it, it just, it's just amazing how often you see Ooh, fish like, like this hit a couple of different baits that the first guy, whatever reason, they just don't hit that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, we keep it pretty mixed up. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Ooh, that feels like a gutter. Nope. Not bad. They are just thick. Well, I mean, that is crazy. I don't know how many casts in a row it's been. But man, is it fun. Just love spring smallmouths. There can be just these massive schools of fish. The habitat is pretty right when you look. Oh, there's another one. Another one? Yeah. It's getting to be a jerkbait deal. Oh. That wind got the got got him going on that jerk bait. I think I'm gonna throw yeah. one. Yeah, you, you you know just to see they're they're going on it. Good one. Yeah, yeah, they're all good, all good jerk. Oh. That's one one thing about that jerk bait bite. I'm fish. Oh, small. He's really 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 like that wind. It likes. Gets their attention. And it gets my attention. <laughs> I like catching smallies any way they bite, but when they're hitting that X wrap, that's, it's about as good as it gets, man. Yeah, you know, as good as it gets. They are just loaded on some of these All spots. All sizes. All sizes. Heck yeah. Look at that. Al and I are on the junior team. We're finishing with the with the J, well, JB but, I mean, small we needed mouse, to but, see. You, 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 you needed to see the mix. Uh, you, you know, for our trip here, Jer, I'd have to say it, it, it met our expectations. I was a little disappointed in a walleye bite. We never did get that, that going. We didn't find you know, the whiteies, but the smallmouth fishing is everything we heard about. And you know what? We're going to be back because when we explore these places, we find new lakes that we could do television shows on at different times of the year. You're going to see something happen on this one. What's this lake? Well, I can't tell you yet. <laughs> hey, if you know anything about my life story, you know the first half of it, I was totally obsessed with fishing and the fishing industry. 24 seven, that's all I cared about from the time I was three or four years old. At least that's what they tell me. When I got to around 37 years old, through the adventures of life, seeing many different things, traveling all over this world, starting to look at the reality of what the world is about, the things of God started to tug at my heart. And the Spirit of God started to tug at my heart through people, places, and circumstances. And finally, when I was 37 years old, God got out of my head into my heart and became absolutely real to me. And when I picked up the Bible at that point in time, I devoured it. I could not believe it. It became so alive to me, I couldn't 
put it down. And looking back at, at, at my life, I'm really thankful for that. those first 37 years. I didn't have a lot of belief structure. I wasn't an atheist. I, I'd seen enough around. There's a God for sure. There's a lot happening. This isn't a happenstance. And, but I was not, let me use the word hindered by the things in the Word of God, like a lot of, uh, of the Bible calls traditions of men that a lot of uh, larger denominational churches and non-denominational churches have, have traditions of men that are in there. And, and uh, 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 then pretty soon they start looking at the Bible and things that are not in God's Word. And they, yeah, but, well, the Bible's kind of true, but not totally. This didn't really happen. And they start picking it apart. I didn't have that. When I got into the Word of God, it became so simple, which the Word of God is. God said this, so do it. And when I did it, and in a lot of it, he puts it in one sentence. This is what the Lord says, go do it. I didn't have to sit, let's see, I'm gonna to go to Bible school, I'm gonna call 14 people and see, see what their thoughts are. Not what God's thoughts are, what their thoughts are. I wasn't hindered that way, and this Word has changed my life and all for the better. By the way, I read one new Bible a year, and this is a good, this is the Duck Commander Family and Faith Bible. Many of you know or, and heard about the, the guys at Duck Dynasty, the family Duck Dynasty. This is from Phil, and I gotta read you what he sent me. And this is the one, I'm just into it now. He says to Al, keep fishing and keep preaching. Hebrews 4.12, Phil. Thanks, Phil, I really appreciate that. This is gonna be one of my favorite Bibles for the next 12 months. Hey, if you've never been into this word, the truth and power of this word will change your life. Anything you need answers to is here. Check it and see. From all of us here at the edge, have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Hey, I wanna take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets. You know, in fishing, there are good days and there are great days. Time is just a wink from the Almighty. We plan, target, rig, and play the game like everyone else.